Hi everyone, this is Tara and welcome to my channel. Thank you for visiting here. Today I have a video all about preparing your body for surgery. I've made this video because I've had a lot of surgery done recently and although I was given information about what to expect on the day and how I was going to recover after, I wasn't really given much information about how to prepare or what to do uh, with my body before surgery. Apart from, I was always told, you know, you're not going to eat or drink for eight hours before your surgery. But apart from that, I wasn't really told uh, very much. So I did a lot of my own research and here is uh, some of the things I've done for myself and I hope you find it useful. So before I start with all of my ideas and research, um, I just want to remind you that you must always, always speak to your surgeon, your doctor, your physiotherapist, your healthcare professional before you have your surgery with your questions. That is the most important thing. I also want to let you know that I am a fitness professional. I've worked in the fitness industry for 22 years. I also work in massage, but I'm not a nutritionist. So again, um, these are just things that I have researched myself or I've um, done for myself. But again, if you have questions about nutrition, it's always important to speak to a professional in those areas. So let's talk about your body and how to prepare for surgery. So first of all, let's look at fitness. And this is a really easy way to get yourself strong and ready for your big day. So remember, looking after yourself before your surgery is always going to help your recovery and make your healing more comfortable, quicker and easier for you. I really recommend that you plan ahead and you start to um, consider your fitness plan or fitness training a few months before you have your surgery. This will give you plenty of time and will give you opportunity to really build up strength and endurance. So with your fitness plan, you really want to look at the whole body, okay? Um, you want to see the body holistically and have a, a training program that includes a strength training, cardio training, and stretching. You want to make sure that your weight is comfortable uh, for your surgery. Um, so remembering that if you um, are overweight, this might hinder um, some of your recovery or make some things more difficult, especially for example, if you were um, non weight bearing and you're going to be carrying all your weight, for example, on one leg, you really want to make sure that your body is a comfortable weight that you can manage. So having a training program in place before will really help you. Also, um, as I said, it's important to think about the whole body. So for example, if you're having surgery on your knee, you might be, after the surgery, using um, equipment um, if you're non-weight bearing, like crutches, like a wheelchair, like a frame. So you're going to have to consider the strength of your shoulders, your back, your arms, your wrists and your hands to support yourself on that equipment. Also remember the other side of your body that you're having, so that you're not having the surgery on is going to be the, for example, the leg that you're standing on and that leg needs to be strong enough to support the other one. Um, so all of these things uh, we need to think about uh, the whole picture. I'll give you another example. Um, if you're going to be having surgery, for example, on your arm or your shoulder, and then after surgery, you're not going to be moving. The arm um, is probably going to be just in recovery, not moving. And this can give you um, an uncomfortable neck, uncomfortable upper back. So you want to have strength there. You want to make sure you're stretched, that your muscles aren't tight so that um, after your surgery, you're more comfortable in the whole of your body because the body works as one. So do plan your training ahead. Think about your weight. Think about having a strong um, and fit body uh, to prepare yourself. Also, I really, really recommend that you have and consider massage before your surgery. Um, you might think that's a bit of a luxury, but I actually think it's a necessity we do carry, um, a lot of people carry stress in the body, tight muscles um, and uncomfortable uh, postures will only um, 
make your body more uncomfortable if you don't deal with them before you have your surgery. So I recommend putting in some um, you know, deep tissue or sports massage before you, you have your surgery because it will help your recovery. It's gonna help your circulation, it's gonna help the actual tissue and fascia of the body, it's going to um, help with healing. It's going to make sure that you feel comfortable. Like if you're, if you're already stiff and tight and uncomfortable before you go in surgery, it's not going to be any better after. So um, do try to resolve these issues. And of course, after you have surgery, you don't want to be having a massage straight away, especially not in the affected areas because they need to heal. So do consider having um, some treatments before. They will relax you, they will improve circulation, healing, uh, lymphatic drainage, and so on. There's a lot of benefits to massage, and also they really help with pain relief. Um, so I had a lot of massage um, before my shoulder surgery, and I really felt that they made a huge difference to my levels of, of pain. So do consider that. Also, um, something I really recommend is to um, look up and, and know some good breathing techniques and some meditation techniques that you can use on the day of surgery. On the day of your surgery, you're gonna be in an unfamiliar environment, lots of people around you, lots of instruments, um, lots of people poking and prodding you with things and foreign objects coming into your body and all of that can be a little bit intense, a little bit overwhelming and um, it really helps to have um, some uh, a resource of breathing techniques that you can use to help calm you down. It helps to practice them before so you've, you, you know how to use them before you, you have your big day. I'll give you some examples. I don't really like having a cannula put in I find it a little bit weird and uncomfortable. So I just close my eyes, I, I practice my breathing, I visualize some um, you know, beautiful things, and um, it really helps me to deal with what's going on. Um, so I really recommend that. There is so, there's so much information out there on YouTube, for example, on Instagram, Facebook, on uh, techniques, easy, simple techniques that anyone can do to help relax the body. So let's now look at diet and supplements. So um, let's talk about herbs, supplements, vitamins, and oils. Okay, so when we're having our surgery, we're gonna have a lot of medications, and you don't wanna be mixing in your herbs and supplements in with that because they can react, and sometimes in a negative way. So from my understanding of what I've read, it's really important to cut out your herbs and supplements two weeks before your surgery, okay? And you might be thinking, oh God, that sounds a little bit intense. I mean, you know, how can my garlic and how can my ginger and my turmeric affect my surgery? Well, you do have to be careful. I'm just gonna read some examples to you here. So for example, um, garlic can increase bleeding. Uh, turmeric can slow down blood clotting. Um, things like a CBD oil, that's a cannabis oil, can um, increase bleeding. Carva, which is a herb people take for relaxation, can actually prolong anesthesia. Uh, ginseng can increase the risk of bleeding. So you can see this is just a few. Echinacea can um, affect how your liver works. So you can see how these herbs, some of, this, some of them we're very familiar with, and I know um, a lot of us take herbs and supplements, you can see how actually potentially this could be pretty dangerous if you're taking them alongside your medications and while you're having surgery. So it's recommended that you cut all of these out two weeks before your surgery to be extra safe. I also recommend um, Remembering that essential oils are also herbs. They are concentrated botanical medicines and they um, can be very strong. Okay, so um, I know a lot of people think that they are, they are harmless, um, but they are powerful medicines. I'll give you another example. So thyme oil uh, can affect your blood pressure. So, um, you, you know, if you're putting that thyme oil on before your surgery, you go into surgery, the medications affect your blood pressure, they're all mixing together, it's not good. So just two weeks before, try to cut them out. 
They recommend that one week before your surgery you stop your multivitamins, again because certain vitamins can uh, affect your body, for example vitamin E um, can affect um, your, how you bleed, um, and you know things like omega oils, again one week before surgery, it's hard to believe isn't it, but omega oils again affect how we, we bleed. So um, it's only two weeks and one week before, so two weeks for your supplements, your herbs, and then one week before um, just making sure you're taking away your vitamins and your omega oils. So that's what you shouldn't be having. Um, now let's talk about what you should have. So um, of course, one month before, we should always aim for a healthy diet, but remember when you're going to have surgery, you really need to give your body some support. So one month before, really try to have a healthy diet. So having a diet, um, a, a lot of plants, vegetable, fruit, plant-based diet, um, unprocessed and cutting out um, things that are gonna cause inflammation like cakes, biscuits, crisps, you know, um, cheap vegetable oils, get them out of your diet because they um, don't help with inflammation and that's not gonna help with healing after your surgery. So do one month before, really look at your diet and see what you can put in to nourish you and take away to help you. Now it's recommended that one month before your surgery you really increase your protein. Um, so that would be your lean meat, your dairy, your nuts, your seeds. Um, and whatever you are, whether you're vegan, you're vegetarian, uh, or you're a meat eater, do think about increasing your protein with every meal. Now to help you with that, I really recommend a grass-fed, hormone-free collagen powder. I just add it into a smoothie and it doesn't taste of anything and it really, really helps to up your protein. But also, of course, collagen is amazing for tissue healing, which will help in your recovery. So um, yeah, I do recommend a collagen powder one month or two weeks before. Um, yeah, just add it in. Also, what's really beneficial for the body is to think about your microbiome not only because you're going to have a lot of antibiotics and medicines put into your body which can affect your microbiome, but remember having a healthy microbiome helps with your immune system and when we are in a hospital environment um, having surgery you're, you're, more, um, you're, you're, you're more likely or can pick up infections. So you want to have a strong gut to stop um, getting infections and to help your immune system. So consider to take a probiotic to help your microbiome and to help your gut healthy bacteria, but also to include amazing nourishing foods for the gut like bone broth, which again, full of protein, but also helps to um, keep your gut strong. So bone broth, again, grass-fed organic is best. Things like kefir, things like kombucha, um, bring them into your diet on a daily basis so that your, your microbiome and your gut can be really strong to deal with the medications and so you can have a good healthy immune system. So these are some ideas of things that you can add in to your diet uh, before you have your surgery. Now of course before your big day there's um, an eight hour period where you won't be drinking or eating your meal by mouth but it is recommended the day before your surgery, the time before your meal by mouth, to keep your foods very simple so they pass through your digestive system quickly. So um, avoiding things like um, heavy pulses or really complex carbs that are gonna take um, quite a long time to go for your system and are quite hard to digest. Um, so keep your diet very simple, things again like a chicken noodle soup, um, things that are easy on your digestion so your digestion system can be clear on the day you have your surgery, you feel light, you feel comfortable. And of course, it's really important to uh, reduce your dairy from what I understand um, the, the, the day before uh, to reduce your dairy intake because I think it's not the best with anaesthetic. Um, and if you want to have less sickness after your surgery to reduce your dairy intake. And 
hydrate yourself again lots of water because you're going to have that period where you're not drinking much water um, or any water as your meal by mouth so those are some ideas on how to prepare yourself um, I really hope that's useful for you these are things that I have done to help me with my surgery and to help my body um, so that is before so there's lots of things that you can do before and remember the healthier you go in the more chances you have of a quicker more comfortable um, and um, easygoing recovery okay your body's going to go through um, a lot and you need to support it so anyway i hope you found this useful um, and again i'm going to remind you that you must always speak to your surgeon your healthcare professional, your physio before your surgery to make sure you have all your questions answered and um, do look up things for yourself. Always do your own research. And um, anyway, I hope that's useful and thank you very much um, for visiting my channel today. And remember, if you like what I do, to subscribe.